One of the primary powers that the crystal skulls have is the fact that they're made from silicon dioxide crystal, natural quartz that's found mm -hmm. in the earth. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful that, in a sense, we, we make our computer chips, mm -hmm. um, memory devices, it stores information, it amplifies, we have communication devices made out of the same substance. Well, all those properties are, in, are uh, in the crystal skulls themselves, and the ancients knew of these particular um, powers, so to mm. speak, and they were able to access them through uh, sets of rituals and intentions, uh, uh, as opposed to our technological rituals, shall we say. They, yeah. they really are living entities. I mean, crystal is, in a way, a living consciousness, rock. Yes. Consciousness, yes. Because it holds consciousness, crystals. So. Um, it, has, it has the original template of the, what's considered in physics the prime radiant, which yeah. is the all, the all that is. So it brings us to that, to that mm. still point, that neutral point where everything is possible. Mm. Well, and a lot of shamanic practices with crystal skulls have, not only is it a connection to their ancestors with that particular lineage or tribe uh -huh. um, that's been downloaded through rituals, but it is also considered a connection to the ancient ones. The ancient yes. ones mm. are the ones many names for them, but basically the ones who were said to have seeded the earth with human DNA. Mm -hmm. And modern shamans now, they, yeah. they use the crystal skulls as a activation and reflection device to their own brains, yeah. because really part of where our destiny, which is our future going, is the activation of, our, of different brain centers. So how would I activate my brain? Use, I mean, you say it's like a computer, but we mm -hmm. have to turn on the, the right program to activate the connection, or is it just opening up psychically? I would say I would um, say it, uh, it's part of it is opening up psychically, finding a portal to go through within the skull. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody that, that works with the skulls, it's different for everyone, and each person's different. And I mean, I I get people to uh, to open to love, and that's mm -hmm. the key. I, people talk about misusing the power of the skull, but from what I, and, and uh, sure, anything's possible, but there's a certain level that you can't reach in the skull unless you're able to feel a certain vibration of love. Mm -hmm. And it's like that's their password, that's their protection, and the bad guys can't, they can't mm -hmm. fake it. You have to have that in your heart. She talked about it going inside of yourself yeah. and my work really revolves around raising one's own vibration. The Synergy said to me, the earth does not need healing in the way that you humans understand. It's you humans that need healing. Exactly. And right. there won't be peace on earth until there's peace inside of us. Right. Thank you. Yep. So from my feeling right now, yeah. it's almost as if it depends on where you are in consciousness. Like if you wanted to go into the 10th, 11th, 12th chakra, you could tune in to the vibration of the skulls and help you access those portals, those dimensions, so that you could actually experience the higher dimensions and then bring them in. Yeah. If you're there, mm -hmm. if you're not, you know, if yeah. you're on your first, second, and third chakra, you can do that as well. So when you see these old, uh, old like skulls that aren't yours, is it like an old friend? I mean, you have your child, but then you have your... Friends. Uh, in this case, yes, but not all. <laughs> it depends on the skulls that come up. Mm. Mm. But this case is an old oh, yeah. friend. And for you, how do you May feel I? about that? Yeah. Oh, oh, sure. Synergy. Sure, go sure. ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> Synergy knows Kirby. Yes. <laughs> what, tell us how you approach a skull, Kirby. Cautiously. <laughs> no. I will, uh, basically, I'll, I'll play with it tactily. I'll warm it up. Uh -huh. I'll just perceive it through my uh, kinesthetic senses first. Mm -hmm. And then um, sometimes I'll put it on a light box <clears throat> and I'll stream different colors of lights through it and see what happens in terms of an activation. What happens is when you blend crystal and light, mm -hmm. it reflects the state of our light body. Wow. So we're actually engaging our own light body. We're, we're seeing a mirror of our own light body. When we're in our own light body, that's when we're free. To, mm. to go to these multi-dimensional places. So that's basically how I, I work with these and then see where it takes me. I usually have an intention also. Oh, setting an intention. Setting an intention, key. whether it's a healing intention or for some particular information about a subject. Mm. And sometimes you'll get a collage of things and you'll just pick, pick it out and then it'll make sense later or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, like wow. dreaming. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and these little miniature skulls, do they, mm -hmm. do they do anything, like just resonate with these? Because they're modeled after. Well, well, a lot of times people will take 
small skulls like this and they'll put it next to one of the ancient ones and they'll have a kind of a download conversation mm -hmm. so they can take a piece of that back with them. Oh. Mm -hmm. What do they call it? Morphogenic. It's morphogenic. Yeah, right. Um, mm -hmm. they, these things talk with each other. They resonate and they transfer sure information. They, they're experts at networking. Yeah. Always around. Mm -hmm. And cooperation. Yeah. What do you get now from Synergy? Does he does he have anything to say? <laughs> what do I get now? Oh, just go ahead. Do your thing with it. No, it's just. Oh, do you, so you, yeah. What is Extreme it? pleasure and satisfaction that this is happening. Wow. Oh. Um, just a, a sense of fulfillment that what it was created for is being fulfilled through you, through, through all of us. So the acknowledgement of that and the act, active engagement of that is just wonderful. So it's that sense of contentment and fulfillment. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of Africa on this right now. Wow. Something about Africa, wow. African plains. Mm -hmm. So not sure what that means, but. Mm, that's interesting. It is interesting. Mm -hmm. One of the, uh, the African uh, indigenous grandmother, one of the 13 grannies uh, Bernadette. said that she said mm -hmm. that Synergy appeared to her mm -hmm. and was talking. It was the first time she'd seen a crystal skull. Right. She called Florida Mayo through her interpreter. They were saying, oh, well, we need to support the crystal skulls more. When was that? This was a couple years ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I spent some time with them, did some private work with them last fall where they really, I spent enough time where they could experience that the skulls are a positive force doing the same thing in the world that they are. Because a lot of Native people have an interest in skulls, but again, they've lost a lot of their, their history or their lore, and so there's a lot of superstition. We've been westernized, every one of us, that Hollywood says that skulls are evil, and that is not what the ancients, even as, as uh, 100 years ago, they weren't seen as evil. Memento mori, remember death that you may remember life. Mm -hmm. And it was not a symbol of evil or doom. It was a symbol of making sure that you use your life wisely, love mm -hmm. wisely, live wisely, laugh. Skulls were the reminder of living life fully. Yeah. With joy. With, with joy. joy. Of course joy. with joy. <laughs>